You know, actually, in a sense, that's exactly what I was going to say in a slightly different way. Uh, not about the Lib Dems, but about local elections. Uh, you were asking whether national issues should be the determinant on how you vote locally. As you said, most people don't vote at all. But, you know, I think 40% is not a bad turnout. The way I experienced I used to be a councillor myself for five years up in Newcastle upon Tyne. Mm. And I had a big majority because people thought that I was doing an OK job. They actually probably think I was a better councillor than I was an MP. But if I had been anonymous, then the vote would have been about the national issues. So unless you imprint your mark in your ward, in your local area, then people will just vote, if they vote at all, according to what they feel about Boris Johnson, Keir Starmer and so on. What I find really interesting, though, about this is Keir Starmer's only got a 5% swing. You know, I think he's a pretty pathetic uh, leader of the opposition. If Tony Blair, whether you like him or not now, if Tony Blair had been in that position, he would be rinsing the Tories, absolutely destroying the Conservatives. I think even if Tony Blair came back, and I wish I don't want him to because I'm sick of him, um, but if he did come back, I think he could probably do a better job. I mean, he'd probably be more popular already than Keir Starmer. Yeah, but it's interesting, though, I, I suspect that, and I know a lot of Conservatives, and not as many as Albie probably, but... You but, might know more. But maybe. How many do you know, Albie? Let's see who knows the most. I know thousands. <laughs> what about I you? Know millions. Oh, okay. well, I know billions. <laughs> trillions. I know trillions. I okay, win. Well, then you win. <laughs> when it comes down to it, I think that a lot of people don't feel that strong in the about party game. That's the kind of thing they talk about in Kensington and in Parliament. He's still, Boris is regarded as a bit of a, a lad. Mm -hmm. And people are, well, of course, he'll have sort of parties. But when it comes down to it, my feeling is that even if they lose 800 seats, it's mm. about 12% loss. It's not very much. I mean, a really bad night is like two, losing 2,000 seats. Yeah. So that's a fairly small swing. Well, Nick, Nick seemed to think that people were more concerned where he is about Partygate and do well, as course I he say, not that. Well, I'm just saying that's what he said, although the Conservative one didn't seem to say that, did he? But yeah. then that's all Keir Starmer is saying. I heard him talking and I just thought, actually telling Boris off for uh, the fact that they're actually focusing on policy, like the immigration policy, which I'm glad they're finally doing something about. But we will talk about that. I'm looking forward to that at uh, five o'clock. I'll be. I think on the local elections, Lembert's absolutely right. The, the 800 councillor mm. seat loss, obviously it's not good news for the Conservatives mm. and an 800 seat gain for Labour is good news for Labour. But actually the figure that really matters is a number of councils that will be under Conservative control mm. and under Labour control. Mm. And actually I think the same poll predicted that the Conservatives would only actually lose a handful of councils in terms of the councils that they control. And Labour would gain 20, but mostly from councils which aren't under majority control mm. at the moment. So those are really the actual mm. important figures. Um, and you'd think that under, current political under the current political climate that the Tories would do much worse and that Labour would do much better. Mm. Mm. And Lembert's absolutely right to say that really we would be expecting something like 1,000, 2,000 councillor seat losses would be a bad night for the Tories and maybe influence whether or not any letters go in to mm. the 1922 committee. But I don't think on current predictions mm. anything's really going to my, change. My